All right. Um, I thought I was going to get around to riveting the ribs into the skeleton yesterday, but it didn't happen. I got them primed in the morning, and it was probably 7 o'clock in the morning, and I was already hot and miserable here in Texas as a result of all of that. So uh, I took a break from that, and I went out and bought a mini split system. So I spent the better part of yesterday installing this uh, and it has made a huge difference so far. I've had it running overnight. It's currently 81 degrees outside and it is 74 degrees in the garage. I don't know how well it'll keep up since my garage isn't really insulated. It just has that reflective foil up. Otherwise it's a big metal building, but uh, anything is better than nothing at this point. So. Yeah, that's what's been going on. Now it's time to start actually putting this thing together and get it in that wing stand. Hope you enjoy. All right, time for the voiceover part in the uh, Keystone Cop style sped up video. So, yeah, uh, new air conditioner. Uh, I'd like to report that uh, it helped because yesterday morning it was already miserable in the garage by probably 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, today, the air conditioner, along with the fan, kept it comfortable in the garage until just after noon, and then it wasn't really able to keep up. It's still comfortable, you know, standing right in front of the air conditioner at the bench, which is nice, but yeah, didn't, uh, can't handle the excessive heat and just the giant metal building. So, but it'll do what it needs to do for now. Uh, and it'll act as a heater later. So the rest of this morning, I was able to get those ribs clicked on and I decided to go with a slightly different approach than how I did the other wing. Uh, I decided I wasn't going to put that rear spar on until after um, I rivet the front. My rationale there is it's not going to make a difference in alignment so it shouldn't hurt anything and having the rear end of those ribs open makes it easy to move them out of the way so I can easily get in there and get them riveted. And it did. It made a huge, huge difference. Uh, I'll even go a step further here in a minute and I'll start pulling ribs out from in between where I'm at uh, to give myself room to get in between them. So, and it did work. Uh, none of those ribs in the main spar uh, will need any rivets replaced. They all came out excellent. Uh, another contributing factor to that is I bought a new uh, offset rivet set there for my rivet gun. The one I had been using is one I've had for uh, probably 15, 20 years. And it was set a little deeper, so it had no it had no forgiveness. You had to keep putting tape on it. Uh, and I tried tape on this one at first, and you know it worked just fine. But then I found out even without tape on it, as long as you keep it from spinning, this one works really well too. So... Ultimately, I abandoned the, uh, the tape on the end of the cup set there. So these first few ribs are the wing walk area. I have, this is the left wing. I have it upside down on the bench right now. Uh, it's just the way I ended up laying them out. Uh, later on, I flip it over because uh, made things confusing for the rear, rear spar, or more confusing than it needed to be. But yeah, as you can tell, I can uh, pretty much get right in there and reach both sides without a problem. Uh, these are really tight because these for, these first few for the wing walk area are really close together. But pulling them out gave myself room. Uh, and these two that you see are facing opposite directions. Now that one right there is... I should have put it in before I put the very end one in. It would have made things a little easier, but... Um, Still, without the rear spar in, it was plenty easy enough to get that in there and lined up.
somewhere here in a minute. I cut my finger pretty good bashing it into the spar. So there's definitely blood, sweat, and tears into this plane now. Uh, I even have to stop here in a minute because I realize I actually got some blood on one of the ribs. I had to clean it off, but yeah. Sacrifices have to be made to the airplane gods, I guess, to appease them so that this thing can get built. I'll do whatever it takes. This is definitely one of those times where having a lower workbench would be nice, but step stool works out really well there. So once you get past the wing walk area, it's really easy taking out that next rib over and just riveting them in one at a time. Even for somebody as big as me, I can get all the way up in there. So I wish I had thought of this on the right wing. Um, would have made things a lot easier because there were definitely some rivets that needed replacing over there, but live and learn. Inside of the left wing will definitely be prettier. Not that anybody aside from me and the inspector will ever know. <laughs> and if you see me moving blue pieces of tape on the front, that's just to protect the uh, the big aluminum bars on the front of the spar because the top and bottom rivets are right up against them and you got to get the bucking bar in there and it's real easy to gouge or scratch them. So the tape's just there to offer some protection. Now, if you see some blue tape on the rivet gun there wrapped around the spring, that's actually there to keep the uh, cup set from rotating. Makes it work a whole lot nicer. So, sp skipped ahead here. All of the uh, ribs are now riveted to the main spar. And now I am just clecoing the rear spar on. And yeah, everything lines up because it's still all extremely flexible right now. Nothing's going to get rigid uh, in that regard until skin goes on. So, and once it's in the stand, <clears throat> in the stand, and the skin is on, then I will I will check it for any warping and make sure that it is dead straight and everything looks like it's all right. And yeah, here you see me spinning and flipping it around. Uh, the whole point to this is so that that rear spar matches the orientation on the plans because there's a whole row on one side and then a different row on the other side that you don't put rivets in right now because hinges and other brackets go in there later on. So I am just making sure uh, I get clecos in those because, again, I don't want to replace, have to remove rivets that I didn't need to put in to begin with. So... Uh, Figured it was easier to reorient the wing, make sure that I'm looking at it the same way I see it on the plans, make my life easier. And the rear spar, super easy. I can use the squeezer and just squeeze all of these rivets. The first four right there you see me doing are flush because they're going to sit underneath the aileron bracket later on. So I've got just the flat set in the squeezer. And those came out really nice. And then I changed it out for the cup set to do the uh, 470 rivets that go in the rest of those spots. And the first couple, I did mess up. I put them in the wrong way around. You're supposed to put the manufactured head on the rib side, the thinnest material. And the shop head ends up on the uh, trailing edge of the aft spar. So... I realized it right after I put them in, and you'll see me here in a minute. Drill them out, put two fresh ones in the right way. There we go. I'm uh, drilling them out now. And all that entails is just 
center punching the top of the top of the rivet drill just deep enough to get through the head of the rivet and then I take that punch that's the same diameter work it around and it pops the head off and then you can just push or pry the rest of the tail of the rivet out the other side make sure the holes are clean and put the new rivets in the right way a little bit of a different camera angle for you hopefully you can see things a little better um, camera is sitting on top of a block of wood that's on the wing though so you'll see it kind of move as I move the wing around a little bit It's definitely nice having the right wing right there and as far along as it is because anytime I got a question about how I did something I can just pop my head over there and look at it and see what I did assuming I did it right on the right one otherwise it's gonna be wrong on both but usually you don't find those out later on until later on when you go to put something else on And now I'm just verifying rivet size because those last few go through the doubler so they're longer. Um, I did put too short of a rivet in, but I figured it out really quick when I saw how short it actually was. And that's it. The skeleton is all riveted together. So now I am cutting a piece of aluminum angle and that's going to be a bracket that gets attached to the outboard end of the rib so that this can sit in the wing stand. I've got a couple of quarter 20 bolts and some wing nuts that will hold it on after I pop some holes in the rib to hold it. Pretty much exactly what I did on the right wing. So yeah, I'm just marking where they're going to go, drilling the holes, I also did end up notching the bracket on the wing stand so that later on when I put the skin on, uh, it'll have some place to go. And I won't have to try and notch it in place like I did the right one. So that'll be helpful. Anyhow, pardon the mess. I still got to get rid of the old spar. But there it is. The left wing is officially riveted and in the stands, or at least the skeleton of it is. So... Next up for this is going to be fitting the skins, final drilling them, uh, probably using up what's left of all of my silver Clecos. Uh, there you can see me putting the center support under it. Get rid of that tape. That's it. Progress is being made. Hope you enjoyed. See you on the next one.